Hi, Brian McCordy here with Black Belt Lean Thinking. I'm excited to bring you today's topic, Kaizen events. This is a lean tool that uh, if you implement it and use it properly, will give uh, a lot of power to your lean initiative and drive a lot of positive change. Now, I've given you lean topics in a sequence on purpose. So if you, if you haven't looked at my videos on self-directed work teams or standardized work, I would look at those before or at least directly after watching this video. There's a reason for that. For Kaizen to have power, you've got to have a lean infrastructure. And I'll explain that here briefly. If we're looking at a typical organization, you have your frontline workers, and as you go higher up the organization, you have fewer people with greater levels of authority. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a construction site, a restaurant, or manufacturing, you're still gonna have something along this line. For today's example, to keep it simple, we'll go with manufacturing. So these are our shop floor workers, our frontline crew, the ones who are getting things done. Now, in a typical organization, when you're dealing with a problem, uh, you've got one or two things that uh, you can do with your information flow. These are the people that make all the decisions, typically. You know, you're, uh, again, from your frontline supervisors, your lead mechanics on up through engineering and department leads through staff and the plant manager. These are the people that see the problems first. Now, they identify an issue. They typically would have to kick that information upstairs and then try and get someone to act on it. A smarter approach would be for them to push decision making and authority down to where they can make decisions and do the work as they see fit. So what they need to do is train and empower these frontline workers. So again, before Kaizen could really be unleashed, you need to put a structure in place to where they understand lean tools, methodologies, and have the freedom to drive Kaizen. And I'll explain what a Kaizen event is and again how to best utilize it. But let's talk just a little bit more again uh, on why you want to do this, what the benefit of Kaizen actually is. Okay, again if these are the people that see the problems, we want them empowered to drive the change. You've all heard of the iceberg principle. So let's, let's do a quick iceberg here. So we've got uh, our big iceberg poking out of the water and up top we'll say we have big problems. If the problem is sticking out of the water, it's a pretty big one. Everyone sees it. Below the surface, we'll say we have regular size problems. And below that, we'll say we have some small problems. And below that, we'll say we got a whole bunch of issues. Horrible handwriting, but you can read it. Okay, they say there's a 10x principle when you're dealing with these. In other words, we have a different color here, for emphasis and effect. Okay, for the big problems, we'll say we have one big problem that's sticking out there. For each one of those one big problems, you probably got 10 regular size problems. For the 10 regular size problems, probably about 100 small problems and about 1,000 issues. Okay, now again, the power of having that lean infrastructure in place is that we're empowering everybody to drive processes that drive improvement. Again, lean centers around people and processes. Lean tools being the processes, and here are the people. Okay, Bob here on the end knows of an issue that is a problem. It's better for him to work with his team and come up with a solution and take care of that issue now rather than let it grow to a big problem. Uh, I've seen this uh, happen many times, and it's, you've probably experienced it too, where you've got a problem. You talk to someone about it, and you go, they tell you, oh yeah, that's existed for years. On some level, they've known about it. Oh yeah, it's always been that way. We, we've always had this quality issue. Yeah, that machine is real temperamental. It goes down quite often. You get issues that should have been dealt with a long time ago, but they become just the norm. They become accepted. Rather than wait, these people know what the issues are. Again, better to empower them and let them tackle those issues while they're small, baby dragons, rather than let them grow full grown and then put down the production line or you know, uh, get a bad quality product out to a customer or something along that line. And I know I said well, I'd stay with manufacturing, but you realize any environment, uh, work environment is going to be the same way. If this were a restaurant, you know, these might be your waiters and cooks. 
Again, they know those issues that delay uh, food getting to the customers. So again, you want to empower those frontline crews, teach them about lean tools, support them, and then let them drive those improvements. Okay, hopefully I've kind of laid a little bit of uh, a groundwork for why uh, Kaizen is so important. When someone in an organization sees a problem, you want to give them an avenue for driving an improvement. Otherwise, dealing with that problem or just having that problem there becomes the norm. It's the way it is. Uh, I'll give you an example of um, a change in a, a, a team type culture to drive this in that I was doing a training session for a large company once and we were talking about Kaizen and one of the newer employees had a Kaizen uh, event that he had identified and it was moving slower than he wanted. He, he needed some stuff from the shop that he hadn't gotten yet. And one of the senior employers kind of leaned over his chair, looked back at him and goes, you are so spoiled. He said, years ago, before we started Lean, if I wanted to drive a change, I couldn't do it. If I found a problem, I could take it to my supervisor or engineer and they'd tell me to go back to work. Then he goes, maybe six months or a year later, they'd implement so the solution and take the credit for it. Because now you guys, you find something you want to improve, you can just do it. Again, tremendous power. If I'm a worker and I know that my job now is much better than it was six months ago because I was able to implement improvements and the knowledge that it will probably be even better six months from now, incredibly motivating. That's a win-win for everyone throughout the organization, including the customers and suppliers. Okay, Kaizen, really Kaizen answers four questions. If I were to come up to somebody and ask them about a problem, or they were to even bring the problem to me, what I need to know is what's the problem, what's the solution, who's going to implement it, and when's it going to be done? Those four things. If they can answer those four questions, I can walk away confident that it's going to be dealt with. If I ask them about a problem and they can't answer those, then most likely a year from now that problem is still going to exist. You need that structure in place and that gives it time bound and uh, uh, again a black and white structure for how it's going to be dealt with. So those questions again are what's the problem as you know it, what's the solution you're going to try, who's going to do it, and when is it going to be done. And if it doesn't work then you use PDCA you make some changes, tweak it, and you try again down the road. You keep going until you've slayed that dragon. You've now there are short Kaizans and long Kaizans. A short Kaizan might be something as simple as, oh Bob here sees that uh, on a certain piece of equipment we always use these same tools. Why not mount the tools actually on the equipment and put a shadow behind them so that people can see what tools should be there and they can be replaced if they're not there. Great short Kaizan can be done in you know just a matter of an hour or so. A long Kaizen might be something where you've got to rearrange equipment, you've got a big 5S you want to do where you might have to shut down equipment and, and utilize people for a few days. So they take and require more planning. But typically a Kaizen just means small improvement for the better. That's those little things that people can come up with to drive those improvements. And again, these are the people that know what those issues are. Some things that help flush out Kaizen to kind of get the brain working thinking about it. Ask uh, the questions of, you know, throughout a typical day, what are those problems that you can almost count on running into? You know, what are those repeaters? Uh, what are those uh, tasks that take too long, have too many steps, are a little bit too complicated, are just silly, things that you don't even think the customer even cares about anymore? What requires too many people, too many tools? Um, think in terms of the seven forms of waste, again, shrinkage, waiting, inventory, motion, transportation, over-processing, over-production. Again, your employees should at some point memorize those because then they're kind of baking in the back of the mind and when they see examples of these, they can go after them. Again, it's uh, just having that mindset, a different set of goggles to look through to flush out potential Kaizans, potential projects to drive improvement. Okay, a lot of power to Kaizen. I've got uh, a few templates on Black Belt Lean Thinking website that you can download to help you use for free. If you have questions on Kaizen events um, or how to do Kaizen or anything to do with uh, the structure to make it more feasible and successful, use my comment section. You know, send me an email. I love answering your questions and I'll do it just as quickly as I can. Okay, hope this all helped you. Again, Brian McCorder, Black Belt Lean Thinking, to your lean success. Thanks for watching.